Penguin. My name is Dr. Kate Bieberdorf, but you may know me as Kate the Chemist. I'm a chemistry professor, science entertainer, and the author of the Big Book of Experiments. For today's experiment, we are going to learn how to do dry ice bubbles. Enjoy! Hey everyone! I hope you're having a fantastic week so far. I am super, super excited because this morning I actually got my hands on some dry ice, and so I figured I would do an at-home experiment for you all. It's been a while. I miss you all so much, so today we're going to do the dry ice bubbles experiment. Okay, so what do you need for this thing? First thing is you need some kind of soda bottle. So I like to use a three liter soda bottle just because it's bigger and it creates more bubbles, so that's my preference. But a half a liter, one liter, two liter, anything like that would absolutely work. Look around your house, see what you can find, and try it. That's what being a scientist is about. Like, see if it will work with whatever apparatus you build. All right, so we've got a soda bottle. After that, you're going to need to build a small, tiny apparatus. And you can go to any hardware store to buy these items. I'm sure you can get curbside delivery right now, so we'll figure it out, but what you need is a funnel, and you need a tube, okay? So what you're going to do is tape the funnel to the tube, right here, and on the other side, what you're going to do is take the cap of the soda bottle, cut a little hole in it. I found scissors work really well, but make sure you grab an adult to help you with this. I don't want you to cut yourself just building your apparatus, but cut a little hole in the cap and then shove the tube through there. So you should have a funnel tube cap apparatus. It takes a few minutes to build, so I actually built this ahead of time just to save some time on camera. Okay, after that, what you're going to need is a bowl, and then inside of it, put some kind of soapy solution. I am very <laughs> um, part particular about this. I yeah, never use bubble bath, or excuse me, I never use dish solution. Instead, I use bubble bath solution because it makes more bubbles. So I strongly recommend for you to use bubble bath solution. Um, today I'm using gum scented. Uh, there's a blue raspberry out there that I think is quite gross, so avoid that one unless that's your thing. Grab the blue raspberry one. Okay, after that you're going to need some dry ice. If you're using dry ice, make sure that you have some kind of cryogenic glove, which I'm sure you all have at home, but instead of a cryogenic glove, you can use a towel, a work glove, a heat glove, an oven mitt. There's a lot of different things you can use, just don't use your bare hand, well it's still a glove, but don't use your bare hand on the dry ice. All right, so we've got a bottle. We've got a funnel tube cap apparatus, some bubble bath solution, and some dry ice. Today I'm actually going to spike mine with something called Universal Indicator. This is something you can buy online at most stores. They can have it delivered. Um, Universal Indicator is actually a solution that has six different molecules in there. So there's six different indicators in there. Um, one of them is called phenolphthalein, and that's a laxative, so you do not want to drink this ever, ever, ever. So make sure you just use it as a chemical and never inside your body. All right, so now that I've got everything ready, I'm going to open up my universal indicator. So I'm going to grab my goggles first just because I don't want to splash that into my eye. Um, if you grab universal indicator, what you're going to do is grab your soda bottle, grab the indicator, and just go ahead and dump a bunch in. What you're going to see is a color change inside my bottle. Now, I have very basic water because I live in Austin, Texas, and our water is basic. So what you're going to see is my indicators reacting to that high basic pH, and it's going to give me a color in that pH range. And I'll, I'll kind of explain what that means in a second, but just kind of bear with me. So right now, we have this kind of purpley color. Let me hold it up against my white wall. There you go. So you can kind of see it's a dark color, a little bit of a purple. Now what I'm going to do is the fun part, cryo glove, heat glove, oven mitt on. And then you're gonna grab your dry ice and put it directly into the top of the soda bottle. One of the reasons why I like the three liter soda bottle is just because it has that wider opening at the top so you don't have to have smaller pieces of dry ice, um, but that's just a personal preference. Now watch the color inside. It went from that purple, now it's a green. Ooh, kind of a vomit green, and we're getting a little bit more yellow. Oh, look at that, you guys, isn't that awesome? We've got like this cool yellow color. That's really neat. Now, what is happening, right? How did we just have a color change there? Well, when we add the dry ice, solid carbon dioxide, to our bottle, what's happening is we're actually forming carbonic acid. So the carbonic acid is going to react with the minerals that are in my water. Like I said, I have basic water, so there's minerals that are naturally in there. And the acid and the base are going to react, and the pH is going to slowly drop. We started with that blue color, which is really beautiful, that purple blue, and that was basic, so at a higher pH than 7. Then we hit that 7 range, like that green color, that's right around pH of 7, that's a neutral species, and now we're here in that orange and yellows, and I'm going to let this go because I'm hoping it can keep going to get more of a red color, and now we're in more of an acidic part, so our pH has dropped, we're closer to pH of like 4, 3, and maybe we'll get to 2, not sure today. But that's not even the best part of the experiment. That's just part one. That's just kind of something fun you can do on the side. You do not need universal indicator at 
all. If you just have dry ice in a soda bottle and a cryogenic cloth, you can just dump the dry ice right in here so you can do the next part. Nope, that doesn't fit. <laughs> All right, so now we're seeing a sublimation. We've got this dry, car dry ice, carbon dioxide, that went into my water, and now we're releasing the gas. So we're gonna use our funnel tube cap apparatus, screw that on the top, and now what we're gonna look at is that physical change. We've got dry ice, solid, going to a gas directly, that is called, da -da -da, sublimation. Good job, you nailed it. All right, so we've got sublimation here. We're gonna take this gas and put it into our bubble bath solution. When you pull it out, what we're going to do is encourage a bubble to form. And then when we pop it, we get that gas to come out. How cool is that? Okay, let's do it again. Oh, look at the color, guys. Oh, orange, very beautiful. Okay, what is this? This is your physical change. Color change was chemical change. That was irreversible. The molecules aren't going to go backwards. Here we've got our physical change, that sublimation. So we've got our solid carbon dioxide going directly to our gaseous carbon dioxide, which I've said like eight times now. All right, now, the bubble bath solution is used because it has a great surface tension. It's going to trap that gas that's coming off, trap it inside of the bubble bath solution so we can actually collect all that uh, white gas, which is neat. Then you pop it, and the gas comes out. Now, fun trick. If you take, well, let's see, let's see if this works. I usually use a bare hand, but this might actually work. So dunk your hand into the bubble bath solution. Then what you're gonna do is try to encourage your bubble to sit on your hand. So now what you need here is to make sure your hand is completely covered in the bubble bath solution. If your hand is dry at all, this will not work. But if it's wet, you can actually hold a bubble. If you're lucky, which I never am, you can step back these. That, that kind of counts, right? Didn't it count? Okay, and then we have this. <laughs> so there is my dry ice bubble, okay? There is a chemical change. That's the acid-based neutralization reaction happening in here. That's what took our purples to our greens to our yellows to now this, like, orangey-red color. Then we have our physical change, the sublimation that took our dry ice into the gas. And then we can even talk about surface tension. We can talk about... Gravity, there's so much science in this one. What a cool dry ice bubble. If you like that and you want to check out more, there are 24 more experiments in the big book of experiments and they're available at stores near you.